I'm joined by Sir Dom McCullen, who is uh, needs no introduction if you've been aware of the media and uh, with the work he's done and the celebrated work he's done. And he's been in the troubled zones, he's been in the conflict zones, name it Bangladesh, Lebanese Civil War, Vietnam War, even in Cambodia. Dr. Sir Dom McCullen, pleasure to have you on the show with us. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sir Dom, now talk to us about being at Exposure and uh, meeting everyone here from Sharjah. What's your first-hand experience of coming to this festival been like? Well, I think it's very good, really, because um, uh, the show's been put on uh, in, in a way that it's kind of very attractive to look at. There's a lot of information here, a lot mm. of cultural information. There's a lot of drama here. Um, and I think what it's done is it's, it's come to a country where people have you know, they haven't been brought up to date like, and they mm -hmm. come here and see this exhibition and they can pick up all kinds of stuff here, you know, it's full of, it's absolutely stuffed with information here and um, beautiful work by great photographers, you know, young mm -hmm. photographers, much younger than me, who are, you know, really producing an extraordinary work here. You should definitely come see this and definitely meet uh, Don McCullen as well. He's got uh, plenty of stories to talk, uh, talk to us about the, the being in conflict zones and how things have shaped your career. So if you can talk to us a little bit more about your career, you were blinded by a CS gas, you've been shot at before as well. The courage it takes to be a news photographer. Uh, talk to us a little bit more about that. Well, I didn't set out to do that, really. Mm. I just wanted to be a photographer, and I didn't want to be involved in anything political. Mm. And it turns out that everything I've ever done in my photographic <laughs> life has been political. I've been involved <laughs> in all kinds of wars. Mm. I spent years in the Vietnam War and Cambodia War, years in the Middle East Wars and Beirut, and, you know, urban gun battle wars are very dangerous because mm. many of my colleagues have been you know, injured, if not killed, and so, but, you know, um, I, I was carried away with the excitement and, uh, and photography as well. I mean, photography was the, the major role that I was mm. playing, and that, I mean, that, that, but it took me to these places, and then I thought, well, while you're there, you know, you mustn't flinch. Yeah. All you must do is come away with uh, very powerful images so that you can bring this information back and show people who do want to go there. And the very important element of it is, as well, is you see it firsthand. Now, how do you take back all, all this information? And how does it, does it for, you, for yourself to uh, recover from seeing such atrocities and such devastation? Uh, where's your sort of comfort zone when you, when you sort of move away from those comfort zones? Uh, that's a good question, really. But um, I've never suffered from post-traumatic stress. But, okay. you know, I've always used, used my photography not to hide behind, but I've used it to mentally uh, kind of nourish my... Um, direction really mm. because you know if I don't lose I don't lose my direction when I'm in a war you can't otherwise you'll quickly lose your life you know but uh, many of my colleagues have paid the supreme price of losing their lives you know many many since 1991 over a thousand journalists and photographers have been killed in wars mm -hmm. and, and it, they get killed every year on a regular basis but you know I, I went to war as a photographer and then I had to be careful not to be carried away by the excitement because it is very exciting. But that would be, of course, indulging myself and that wasn't the reason I was there. So I had to quickly shake myself down and, and try to come back to myself and mm. say, you know, hang on, you know, this isn't Hollywood, this is the real thing. This is the know? real thing, isn't it? And, and Hollywood has always portrayed war as uh, glamorous and mm. romantic. Well, it certainly is not. You know, no, it's totally definitely not. Not, not in that, that league at all, really. Yeah, and now, and now for yourself as well, there's been some photos that a lot of um, our listeners might be aware of. There's some life-changing ones as well, career-changing ones, especially the one at the, at the Vietnam War uh, of, of a soldier and the shock horror on their face. Uh, talk to us about capturing these moments. How did they come to you and, and, and for you to really carry this message as well? Well, I was in a, a big battle in the t offensive mm. in 1968. I was in the Citadel Battle of Hue. And I was with the 5th Marine uh, Battalion, and uh, they got chewed up by the North Vietnamese regiment that was dug in there, mm. and they were using lots of snipers and mortars and hand grenades. It was close, close enough to throw hand grenades at each other. Um, and, you know, after a while, these American soldiers, these Marines, who were not trained to be, uh, you know, soldiering in street battles, they were meant to be hitting beaches and jungle warfare. So the danger in urban street battles is there are a million... Mm. Um, windows facing you where you know each one could be containing a sniper so the, the uh, battalion I was with uh, called Delta Company mm. uh, of the battalion where uh, they lost 40 men you know killed and uh, wounded and it decimated mm. that company so I spent um, 12 days with them 
And in the end, you could see the horror of war on their faces because, you know, you don't sleep well at night. You don't sleep at all hardly. You're no. sleeping in rubble and, and disgusting kind of conditions. So even I started looking like the people I was photographing at the end of 12 days. True. No. So, Dom, I've got to ask you this. Now, we're living in this era. We've got this this fake news saga. We've got these developments and how news media is changing to more, obviously, more video content. But uh, how do you look at the media nowadays compared to uh, what it was like and how newspaper articles and such images would uh, really shape the headlines across the world and uh, the public sentiment? Well, I look I look upon media now in almost with disgust in a way because they're mm. not covering the... They don't seem to have the responsibility to cover the essential kind of news uh, coverage that we need to see we do mm. n- we do not need to see you know the uh, narcissism that we see in our papers the good looking people the footballers the rich and the wealthy you know that's not information that's more like fake news to me mm. uh, we need to see the suffering and struggling of other people's lives who are not so fortunate and i think that the proprietors they they encourage this kind of narcissism and uh, because they make money from it you know it's it's True. they don't want to show the pain and suffering of what they would call the losers in this world or the misfortune they they want you know the glamour the good looking people the the, the couturiers and mm. all you know it's just sickening for me to look at it really because you know all the most important things are being completely swept onto the carpet sure. i'd like to see some more responsible news editors and more responsible proprietors are we coming that coming back to that stage do you think anytime soon or are we just uh, drifting away from it I don't see it in, in the distant mm. future. We, we, we've now got into a situation mm. when it all comes down to financial gain. Mm. People are not running organizations uh, as a business uh, and, and mm. you know, in news media. However, you, the outlet, we're talking about media here, yeah. it's all about at the end of the day, you know, the people who do it are doing it for a purpose and that is to make money. Andrew, it's a bit of a shame there, but uh, Dom, it was a pleasure to have you on air with us. Thank you for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure.